This is Geometry, Chapter 6, Section 6, in which we will be studying trapezoids and kites. First off, we need to know what a trapezoid is. It's a special kind of quadrilateral with only one set of parallel sides. It's not a parallelogram. So the properties we've learned about parallelograms this chapter don't apply to this guy. He's only got one set of parallel sides. Now our parallel sides are called the bases. The non-parallel sides have a name. They're called the legs. And when you have a base and a leg come together, those are called the base angles. And in the special situation where the legs are congruent, what we're called, what we have is called an isosceles trapezoid, when the two legs are equal. Okay, they're not always equal, but when they are, we get some useful stuff. So here's a picture of a trapezoid. Trapezoid A B C D A B D C. Sorry, got to go in order. You'll notice A B and C D are parallel, so those are the bases. AC and BD are not parallel. Those are the legs. Angle A and angle B would be one pair of base angles. C and D would be another pair. Now, when these things are isosceles, we get something useful. In an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent. So C would be equal to D. Angle A would be equal to angle B. And the converse also holds. If you have a pair of, of uh, congruent base angles, if A is equal to B, or if C and D are equal, then you have an isosceles trapezoid. And another way to tell about isosceles trapezoids is to look at the diagonals. If the diagonals are congruent, BC and AD, then that tells you it's isosceles, and the opposite is also true. If you know it's isosceles, then the two diagonals are congruent. So it goes both ways. They could have given that to us as two theorems, but they gave it to us as one. Now let's make use of these ideas. And we have an isosceles trapezoid here. And our job is to, using the information we have, find the measure of angle X, W, Z, this base angle over here. Well, since that's isosceles, this base angle is equal to the big base angle over here at Z, angle Y, Z, W. So since this big angle over here is 45, that makes this big angle 45. Angle WXY, remember what's true about these two sides. They're parallel. And this is a transversal. Consecutive interior angles are still supplementary. So 180 minus the 45 we know down here gives us 135 up here. Now the length of XZ will be the same as the length of WY. WY is 10 plus 15, or 15 plus 10, which is 25. And then it's not much of a reach. If it's 10 this way, then it'll be 10 this way. Because that makes an isosceles triangle in there. Now, if we connect the midpoints of the two legs, what we get is called the mid-segment. Some books will use the term median, so I want to throw that out there for you in case you ever run into it. 
your book uses mid-segment, so that's the term I'll stick to, but it's also called median. And the mid-segment has some special properties. The mid-segment is parallel to both of the bases, and more importantly, it's e the length of it is equal to the average of the two base lengths. So CD is equal to the average of AB and EF. So add those together and divide by 2. That's what I've done here. Divide by 2 is the same as times a half. And that gets us the length of the mid-segment. Now we're going to apply that theorem to a couple of mid-segment problems here. And our first one, we know the length of the mid-segment. So 12 is going to be the average between these two values, x and 16.8. By the way, notice we know this is the mid-segment because we know these two are congruent, so that's a midpoint. And these two are congruent, so that's a midpoint. That's why this information is important to us, to know that's a mid-segment. So half of the total of these two equals 12. Distribute the half. Subtract the 8.4 over and then divide by a half and we get 7.2. Okay. That's if we know the mid-segment and we're looking for one of the sides. What if we don't know the mid-segment but we know the two bases? Well, then it's easy. The mid-segment is the average between them, so the average of 14 and 22. Half of 36 is 18. So mid-segment's not that tough. We like mid-segments. Let's move on to talk about the kite. And they named the toy actually after the shape. So a kite is a special kind of quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. AB is congruent to AD. BC is congruent to CD. Okay. Notice they're not congruent to each other necessarily. In fact, well, they could be, but they don't have to be. Generally speaking, a kite is not a parallelogram. You don't have parallel sides anywhere. So all the properties of parallelograms are out the window. Can't use them. But they have a few interesting properties of their own. If you have a kite then the diagonals are perpendicular. So if we drew in this diagonal here, and we drew in this long horizontal one here, those would be perpendicular to each other. Sounds like right triangles to me. And if we have a kite, then one exactly one pair of opposite angles is congruent. And it would be the pair where the non-congruent sides come together. So the one marked side meeting the two marked side, this angle, is equal to the one mark meeting the two mark, this angle. The two that are between common sides, you can't say are congruent. So let's do a couple of kite problems. If angle BAD is 38 and angle BCD is 50, our job is to find angle ADC. Well, first and foremost, we have a quadrilateral. 
and quadrilaterals add up to 360 degrees. So the 38 from here plus the 50 from over here plus these two are equal, so x and x. Do a little arithmetic. Subtract the 88, we find out that angle ADC is 136 degrees. Okay. Now our other problem, we have BG is 5, GC is 8, and our job is to find CD. Well, it'll be easy to find BC, because as I said on the previous page, giving you a big hint, I smell a right triangle, because I know these diagonals are perpendicular, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So doing a little arithmetic, BC is the square root of 89, which is 9.434, according to my calculator. Well, if that's 9.434, then CD is also 9.434. Okay. We're going to be using our Pythagorean theorem quite a bit with kites because we have right triangles all over the place. And as always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in and ask, and we will see you in class.